Welcome in everyone and welcome to the Cup of Tea channel. So on December 5th, we're going to be receiving some brand new endgame content known as the Abattoir of Zia. This video is going to be covering over what the Abattoir is, and additionally the best ways you can prepare for it and what rewards you'll receive from it as well. So without further ado, let's get right in. So first things off, this content is focused around level 100s. If you're not at that level yet, do not worry. We've been given a really good opportunity starting November 20th till the 27th. We'll have the event known as Mother's Blessing Week. This is going to provide you with a 35% gold increase, but most importantly, a 35% experience increase. And already with the 40% buff, this is going to give you a 75% experience buff. So to hit that level 100 is going to be very achievable. So the way that the Abattoir of Zero will work is very similar to Diablo 3's Greater Rifts. You'll be given an allotted time of 10 minutes and during that time you have to slay as many monsters and demons as you can. If you manage to successfully do this you will then summon a boss at the end of the dungeon and when defeating the boss you will then receive loot, glyph experience and then also a recipe for a sigil for the next tier up of the Abattoir of Zia. These sigils can be crafted from your occultists. You can find these in your towns and cities. You'll notice in the craft sigil tab as well, you'll have a brand new one known as Bloodforge. Simply open this up and with the right sigil powder, craft the one that you want. You'll then craft your Bloodforge sigil and when you use it, it will summon a portal in Ked Bardu in Dry Steps. This will then grant you access to the abattoir. With this new event comes a brand new glyph as well, known as the Tears of Blood. This works very differently to the glyphs we currently have, whereas the glyphs we currently use only level up to level 21. This one, however, can be leveled up to 200. And with it, with the bonuses for every five core stats purchased within range, you gain a 2% increased damage multiplicative. And additionally, it will grant you a 50% bonus additive to all rare nodes within range. And this bonus increases by 10% for every 10 levels. We're now gonna move over to the second part of this video. And this is just ways you can prepare yourself for the Abattoir of Zir when it released on December 5th. So first of all, you should be level 100 or have a character of level 100 by the time this is out especially with taking advantage of this week's event the second part is making sure you have the right gear with the correct specs as well as using a build which is more suited for the abattoir of zero so when it comes to actually theory crafting and putting builds together that perform the best i'm not that knowledgeable behind it admittedly however there are some fantastic resources you can find online i'll put two in the description which i use and first of all one is known as d4build.gg and being a barbarian I actually follow guides under a very well-known content creator for Diablo as Rob2628. So a massive shout out to them. The builds that are posted on here are very reliable. It will show you what gear you should be focusing on equipping as well as stat priority. And additionally, gems, vampiric powers, skill trees, paragon boards as well as glyphs alternatively you can download the mobilytics app onto your computer and access this whilst playing diablo 4 by pressing the tab and w key at the same time these are builds submitted by players themselves and they will provide the information that you need for your build and whilst on the topic of gearing as well, we have been introduced to the five endgame bosses in Season 2 to allow us to target farm certain uniques which are required for certain builds. So I recommend using this time that you have right now to start farming mats to summon these bosses. And additionally, there has been an update with the Helltide chests. If you spend the 300 cinders, instead of just getting free living steals, you can potentially get a lot more now, meaning you can get a lot more Duriel runs. And if you're very lucky, managing to get an Uber unique before the Abattoir of Zir. So the last two I kind of want to go over, these are very minor ones, but still players may forget about them. So it's just a good little reminder for you to make sure you prioritize these as well. So we're going to start off first with your potions, elixirs, as well as incense. Obviously, these require resources to be able to craft. So make sure in the overworld you are picking your herbs and additionally doing your whispers because they can provide some resource bonuses as well. But the benefit of using these elixirs as well as incense, they can provide bumps in stats for your resistances, as well as your offensive stats as well and additionally with a recent patch update as well the incense buff still applies even after death as well so there is more of an incentive to stack up on these resources and then the final one pretty much everyone should have this covered or achieved already but just in case you're renowned as well as your altars of liliths so leveling up your renown for each region is pretty straightforward you can do this through either exploration questing dungeons and with each tier that you hit for that region you'll get a small reward this can range from skill points 
potion capacity increase, or even Paragon points, which will contribute to your end game builds. What will also contribute to your renown is the Altars of Lilith themselves. These can be found in the overworld, some more obvious than others. I recommend looking up a guide video which you can find on YouTube to find every single one of these, but each statue that you discover will provide you a permanent buff, some of which can be stats which will help your character's power level increase ever more, so I highly recommend that you make a start on finding these if you haven't done so already. And that pretty much wraps things up for this video right here. I hope you found any part of the video super useful. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment what you thought, anything I can do to improve my content for you guys, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well for more Diablo 4 content. And additionally, I stream over on Twitch as well. We'll definitely be doing the Abattoir of Zia, so be sure to tune in, drop by and say hi over at twitch.tv forward slash cuppa underscore underscore t. And until then, goblins, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.